Jenny claims that rabbits in Australia have longer ears than rabbits in Spain. To test her claim, a randomly selected sample of rabbits was collected in each country. The length of one ear of each rabbit was measured and the value recorded correct to the nearest millimeter. In the Australian sample, the median recorded value was 80 millimeters and the interquartile range was 11 millimeters. The recorded values for Spanish sample are shown in the following box and whisker diagram. This is the whisker diagram about length of ear in millimeters. Complete the following table for the recorded values of the length of the rabbit's ears in each sample. Okay. So look that median of Australia uh, is 80 and then interquartile range is 11. This data got from this information that 80 millimeters and 11 millimeters. Now, how we complete uh, this table for Spain? Spain median, look that. This is the median for Spain, the median, the median between, if this is 72, this is 74, between 74 and 76. So median for uh, Spain is median 74 plus 76 over 2. And it is 75. So this is 75. Okay. And then interquartile for uh, Spain. Look that... Uh, the upper the upper quartile, this is the upper quartile, 84, while the lower quartile is 68. So in interquartile range for Spain is EQR for Spain. It is 84 minus 68. 16. So this is 16. Justifying your answers, compare the distributions of the length of rabbit's ears in Australia and Spain using the median, the interquartile, interquartile range. Okay, so So that the value of Australian median, okay, the value of Australian median greater than the value of uh, Spain median. So I'm going to write it like this. Australian median greater than Spain median. So it means uh, Australian Australian rabbits have longer have longer ears rather than uh, Spain rabbits. Okay. Part two. Uh, if you look the interquartile, interquartile of Spain greater than interquartile of Australia. Okay. So I'm going to write thing. 
Spain uh, interquartile greater than Australia interquartile. So it means Spain rabbits Uh, Spain rabbit ears, I mean, more variation more variations uh, or more spread. Uh, then Australia rabbit. And this is about uh, the data, the data of rabbits, uh, the spread of rabbits, or the variations of rabbits in Spain and in Australia. Darren buys car for $35,000. The value of the car decreases by 15% in the first year. Fine. The value of the car at the end of the first year. Okay. 15% uh, decreases. Okay. Fifteen percent. It means fifteen over one hundred times uh, the price of this car. Thirty-five thousand, and it is five thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, this. So it means the car value at the end of the first year. The class value at the end of first year uh, thirty five thousand minus five thousand two hundred fifty. It is twenty nine seventy fifty twenty nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Next part B. After the first year, the value of the car decreases by eleven percent. After the first year, in its subsequent year, B, find the value of Darren's car 10 years after he buys, giving your answer to the nearest dollar. Okay. Um, okay. Decrease for uh, eleven percent. It means the failure. I'm gonna using the formula. Uh, at p at p times or twenty nine seven hundred fifty times one uh, one. Minus 11, 100 minus 11, it means 0 0.11. Okay. Uh, in percent, okay. Or n minus 1 from this formula. Uh, 1. 
minus i. Okay, but uh, I'm, uh, I use, I already use 100 minus 11 or 1 minus uh, 0 0.11, no problem. It's going to be 29,750, 0 0.98, uh, 9 because 10 minus 1. And if you calculate it, uh, sorry, it is 9, uh, 8, 9, sorry, not, not 9, 8. Eight nine because eleven, and if you calculate, the value would be ten thousand four hundred twenty three dollars. When Darren has owned the car for n complete years, the value of the car is less than ten percent of its original value, it means 10% of it's 130,000. Find the least value of N. Uh, the formula for it is I'm gonna using this formula. 1 plus uh, 1 plus R or 1 plus I is going to be how oh, it is or like this because less than less than original 10% uh, of original 5 original price okay so it is less than 10% of 35,000. So PV is 29,750 uh, times 1.11 1. 1. power N. This is 3,500. Uh, 3, so if 1.11 N at uh, 3,500 over 29,750, uh, that is wait, 2 over 17. Okay. I have calculated that and then lock to lock and lock 1.11, 1 1.11 1 over uh, less than lock 2 over 17. What well, was here? So it means and at least lock over lock 1.11. 1 so and less than if you calculate it and approximately becomes 20. So at least 20 years. A monument is in the shape of a right cone with a vertical height of 20 meters. Oliver stands five meters from the base of the monument. His eye level is 1.8 meters above the ground and the angle of elevation from Oliver's eye uh, level, from Oliver's eye's level to the vertex of the cone is yeah. 58 degrees, as shown on the following diagram. Find the radius of the base of the cone. Okay, so we are going to calculate 
this. This is radius. R. So it is 1.8. It means this is the height from this point is 18.2 because 20 minus 1.8 is 18.2. <clears throat> so if this angle ah uh, this angle is a and this if this angle is b and if this is c this is d e and f So we are going to find AB, AB or R. I'm going to calculate here. Uh, wait. Tangent, because uh, we are going to find DE first. Okay. We are go I'm going to calculate the E first. <laughs> so tangent 58 uh, it equals the DF over DE. And it is 18.2 over DE. Or DE equals 18.2 over tangent 58. It is 11.37726. So on. This is DE. And it means R. R equal, this is R, A, B, R, or A, B. It is A, C minus B, C. A, C is 11.3726 because A, C equals D, E. So R equals A, C 11.3726. BC is 5. So R equals 6.3726, so on. That is R. And find the volume of the monument. Uh, this is a cone. If we look the shape, so we are going to find the volume of a cone. Uh, firstly, I will find the base area, the base area, uh, the circle area, this with radius 6.3726 pi r squared. It means 3.14 times 6.3726 squared. And if you calculate, the result is 127.5163 m squared. And then the volume Uh, volume of cone is 1 over 3 mm. times base area times AF, the height. Okay. So it is 1 over 3 times 
127 uh 127.5163 meter square eight times af af is 20 times 20 so if you calculate the result will be 850.11 meter cube. So this is the volume of the monument. The random variable x is normally distributed with mean 10 and standard deviation 2. Find the probability that x is more than 1.5 standard deviations above and mean. Okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna use a Z table. Uh C table to find 1.5. This in Z table. So in Z table. 1.5 is 0 0.9332. Yep. So that means the probability x greater than 1.5 is 1 minus 0 0.9332. And the result is 0 0.668. 0 0.0668, this, the probability. The probability that x is more than k standard deviations above the mean is 0 0.1. The k element, real number, find the value of k. Right. Also, through z table, a probability that z greater than k is 1 minus 0 0.1. Okay, so this uh, is 0 0.1, so it is 0 0.9. In a C table, uh, 0 0.9 you can find on 1.28, and the number is 0. 9, uh, 0 0.8, sorry, 0 0.8, 9, 9, 7, this. So, C table 1.28, this, the point, the number, I mean. So, it means K, so, K equals 1.28, this. Next, a particle moves in a strike line such that it passes through a fixed point O at time t equals zero. This is uh, point O, where t represents time measured in seconds after passing O. For t interval zero to 10, its velocity v meter per second is given by uh, this function uh, phi t equals 2 sine 0 0.5 t plus 0 0.3 t minus 2. So this is the velocity function. The graph of t is shown in the following diagram. This diagram. Okay. Find the smallest value of t when the particle changes direction. Right. Uh, if you using calculator uh, to solving these problems, I have I have used a calculator, uh, Casio. 
Cassiograph 75. Okay. So through, through this calculator, you can see the coordinate point. Okay, but I'm going to show you uh, how we find uh, the values of t. Look that uh, we are going to find the smallest, the smallest value of t when the particles changes directions. On this graph, on this diagram. Uh, the particle changes directions when it's on and it's on the maximum point. And this is an extreme point, okay? And the maximum point, it changes direction. So we have to find this point. How to find it? Based on the first derivative, okay? or you can determine through the calculator, but I would like to show you how we uh, we determine the point through, uh, through this way, through my way, through uh, the first derivative to sign 0.5t plus 0.3t minus two. And the first derivative is two half sine, half cosine, I mean, 0 0.5t plus 0 0.3. And it, it should be zero, okay? So we can determine uh, the extreme point or the maximum point. And it's gonna be cosine 0 0.5t equals minus 0 0.3 uh, cosine 0 0.5 t equals cosine 107 point four five seven six so cosine 107.4576 is minus 0 0.3 so it means 0 0.5 t equals 107.4576, okay. I need more space, next. So, uh, now we're gonna find, sorry, 107.4576 over 0 0.5 times, because we are to convert, Okay, over 180, one, this 180. And we found the result, 3.751. So this, uh, the particle changes the, its directions when t, when t equals, 3.751, okay. I would like to write in the conclusion. So, when T equals 3.751, the particle changes. its direction. Now, part B. Okay, based on this uh, information that the displacement of the particle is measured in meters from O. Okay, so the unit is meter. Fine, the range of values. The range of values of T for which the displacement of the particle is increasing. Okay. So actually, the uh, increasing from this point to this 
point. It's increasing. Uh, the particle increasing in this uh, this graph from this point to the maximum. It's increase. Okay, it increase from uh, t equals zero to it increase from the particle in the particle movement the particle movement uh increase from t equals zero to t equals three point seven five one okay it increase okay. it increase from uh t equals uh, t equals zero to t equals three point seven five one okay so that is the range value for t okay so the range value for t is this is the range t uh, 0 to 3.751. But also you can determine this coordinate point. This point, this is t. Okay, I will give name t1 and this is t2. Okay, T1, uh, this interval, okay, uh, it increase uh, above of T, above of uh, T axis. And after that, after maximum, it becomes decrease. Okay, so how much T, uh, T1 and T2 based on the calculator, you can determine it. Okay, so the calculator, this is uh, one, uh, one point six eight eight. Yep, on the calculator. And this T or T2 is six point one one. Okay. I have to determine that point through uh through this way through the function velocity function to uh two sine zero point five t plus zero point three t minus two and but you can determine uh through calculator but I would like to show you uh by um, my method, numerical method, uh, I already check one by one if uh, velocity, uh, if t equals one, y, taking one because uh, if you look this graph, look this graph, at this 10, 5, it means here is 2.5 and here is 7.5. 2.5, it means this point under under of 2.5. And as well, if this is 7.5, this point under of 7.5. Whether 6 or 6.1 or 6.2, that's what we are going to check. And as well, this, whether 1 or 2 or 1.5, uh, later I will show you. I have checked one by one, right? So if t equals one, based on my calculations, the result is minus 0 0.74. And if v equals two, the result is 0 0.2832. Uh, look that this result 
approach from the right side, while this result approach from the left side. Uh, I would like to find if the result is 0 0.00, right? Uh, after approximation, next. And how about if the velocity is 1.5? If Sorry, if the t, 1.5. If 1.5, velocity will be minus 0 0.186. And if t equals 1.6, the velocity will be minus 0 0.084. And if the time, if t 1.61, it is still 0 0.074. Uh, While if t equals 1.68, Okay, I have checked one by one. And the result is minus 0 0.0061. Uh, actually, you can use it, but this number approach from the left side. And if you approximate this number, it will in this decimal, it will be minus 0 0.0. One okay, and I have checked already if t equals one point six eight eight, and the result is zero point zero zero one. If you approximate this number, it will be zero point zero zero. So resist it t or t one equals one point six eight eight. Again, you can using your calculator. Uh, for me, I have used my calculator Casio, the Casio uh, graph 75. Next. For T2, uh, I have checked V7, uh, V6, and if, if V6, if T equals 6, the result 0 0.07. 9.2 approximately becomes 0 0.1. So uh, unrestricted 8. So what if t equals 6.1? Uh, the result is 0 0.0098. So approximately becomes 0 0.01. So not received 8. If t equals 6.11, it is 0 0.002. We can receive it because if you approximate this number, it becomes 0 0.00. I have checked already if t equals 6.12 and the result is minus 0 0.004. Uh, if you approximately this becomes minus 0 0.00. But I would like to receive it because uh, it approaches from the right side and it is equal to zero. So T2 equals this number 6.11. Okay, that is T2. Okay, it's about T1 and T2, right? And <clears throat> C, find the displacements of the particle relative to O when T equal zero. So if displacement, it means we are going to find the area, area from zero to 10. Which area? This area, I would like to change. My color will be, will be like this, that area, okay. Okay. Then that's that's area. And how to calculate that? Like this. I'm going to show you through integral. That's uh integral zero to ten is uh the displacement. Uh integral two sine zero point five t plus 0 0.3t minus 2 
property. And we have to find first the integral of this uh, of these functions. Okay, the integral is uh, the integral of its function minus yeah minus four cosine zero point five t plus zero point one five t squared minus two t. This is the inter uh, the integral of this expression, and then after that substitute ten and zero into this expression, and uh, we can get the result the calculation like this minus four cosine five because zero point five times ten plus fifteen minus. 20 minus uh, minus 4 cosine 0 plus 0 minus 0. So it becomes minus 2.135 minus 0. And it is minus 2.135. So the displacement, uh, not minus, but the displacement, the displacement, equals 2.135 meters. A class is given two tests, test A and test B. Its test is scored out of a total of 100 marks. The scores of the students are shown in the following table, like this table. Let X be the score on test A and Y be the score on test B. So this is X and this is Y. The teacher finds that the equations of the regression line of Y on X, Y on X, for the scores, wait, wrong, Y on X. For the scores is y, this is the equation, y equals 0 0.822x plus 18.4. Find the value of present product moment correlation coefficient r. Okay. So uh, the first step we have to complete the table. Okay. Uh, so this is students. Okay, so it's one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Right, for test A, that's the result 52, 71, 100, so on until 61. For test B, the result are 58, 80, 92, so on, until 74. Uh, these are X and Y. Now, I will complete with X squared, okay, amount of X squared, Y squared, as well X multiply Y. X squared, uh, 52 times 52 is 2,704. And then 71 times 71 is 5,041. And after that, 100 times 100 is 10,000. And you can multiply all of this data until 10. 61 times 61, 3,721. That is x squared. So you can complete this. How about y squared? y squared, 58 times 58, 3,364. 80 times 80, 
64 uh, 6400 92 times 92 8,464. So on, you can determine, you can calculate uh, until 10, 5,476. That is y squared. <clears throat> Next, x multiply y. 52 times 58. 3,016. 71 times 80. 5,680. 100 times 92. 9,200. So on, you can calculate till 4,514. So, the next step you can determine sigma or amount of x. Sigma x is 796. Sigma y, 839. So sigma, sigma x, 52 plus 71 plus 100. So on until plus 61. Also, uh, sigma y. Next, for uh, mean x, or x bar is 79, and 6. And y bar, or mean y, is 83. Uh, not mean uh, average of x and average of y. Okay. And then after that, sigma x squared. Sigma x squared is 65,720. Sigma y squared is 72,357 sigma x y 68,724 I already calculated and n n is 10 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 6, 7, 8, 9 10 students. So that's why R, N, sorry, N equals 10. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how we, uh, how we calculate the coefficient, uh, the co correlation coefficient or R through this formula, N times XY, minus sigma x, sigma y over <clears throat> n times sigma x squared minus sigma x squared Okay, times n sigma y squared minus sigma y squared. Okay, and you can substitute this result into this formula. It's 10 times 68. 724 minus uh, you can uh, substitute this minus uh, this number over square root you can substitute this 10 times so on 
you can substitute that this number and you will find if you calculate the result of correlation coefficients r is 0 0.901 you can substitute this result this number into this formula So A is done. Giovanni was absent for test A. So there is a student's name, Giovanni. And Paolo was absent also. A student named Paolo, absent for test B. The teacher uses the regressions line of Y on X okay, to estimate the missing scores. Paolo's score. 10 on test A. The teacher estimated his score on test B to be 27 to the nearest integer using the following calculation. So Paolo, <clears throat> Paolo has has score on test A and, this, and his score is 10. And the teacher estimated this is estimated uh, Paolo score on test B is 27. Okay, teacher estimated that. And estimated by this equation, regression equation Y equals uh, 0.822x plus 18. Point four, uh, based on this equation, and its result is twenty seven. Right. So it's based on uh, this regression y on x. <clears throat> Next, give a reason why this method is not appropriate for Paulo. Okay. Uh, it's not appropriate because uh, because it should not it should not it should not extrapolating. Okay. Because it should not extra relating. If you uh, if you test, if you using the formula uh, y on x, uh, it's hard for you, but not hard, but cannot cannot extrapolate to find the solution. Okay. Next, other students give funny score ninety on test B. Okay. The teacher estimated his score on test A to be 87. So other students, Giovanni, on test B, uh, his score is 90. And the teacher estimated his score on test, on test A becomes 87, his score. Uh, to the nearest integer using the following calculation. So it's calculation. Okay. Based on this regression. Based on this regression as well. Question C. Give your uh, give your reason why this method is not appropriate for Giovanni. Why not appropriate? Because <clears throat> but we are going to change the uh, the color. Okay. Yeah. Part, part B. Uh, part C. Sorry. Part C. Point one. It is not uh, appropriate because. 
uh, because we shouldn't because we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't use we shouldn't use line of y on x okay. y on x to predict x on y okay as you know that test a a test a for is uh, the variable is x and the test b the variable is y so we shouldn't use line of y on x to predict x on y to predict the opposite cannot we have to use so we have to use the line uh yeah we have to use the line of x on y we have to use this line of x on y <clears throat> so so one done like next one use an appropriate method to show that the estimated test a score for giovanni is 86 to the nearest integer okay the appropriate method uh i will use in this formula uh, bx y it equals n times sigma x y minus sigma x minus uh, times sigma y over n times y, sigma y squared minus sigma y squared. Okay. So if you substitute the result here. The death result into this uh, formula is going to be 10 times uh, sigma xy minus sigma x multiply sigma y. You can substitute the number here. After that, 10 times the number is uh, sigma y squared minus the number here. And you can find the result is 0 0.987124. So, uh, 0.987124, not 24, sorry. So this is uh, the result of bxy and no, I would like to. I would like to uh, to show you how we find x okay, based on regression line. Regression line. Y on x. Okay, and the rules like this or the formula like this, x minus x, the average x equals b, x, y, y minus average y. Okay, and it is x minus 79.6. 0 0.987124 y minus 83.9 okay but it's multiply so it's going to be x 
x equal um, multiply 0 0.987124 y <clears throat> then times 83.9 minus uh it minus 82 point 81970366 plus the 79.6 and you can find our y uh, substitute y with 90 but y equals 90 so 0.987124 times 90, okay? And then because uh, student score is 90, is 6, and you can find the result is... The result is 85.621, so on, and approximately becomes 86. But this, okay, so I'll look at uh, we can find. 86 based on the appropriate method. Consider the function defined by fx equals 3 half e power x minus 2 with x interval 0 to 4 so that the inverse function is given by uh, inverse fx equals 2 plus ln 2x over 3. Okay. Right. I would like to, I'd like to use uh, my method that F uh, composition with uh, this composition, okay, it is equals x, okay, and F <clears throat> it put a F of F inverse x, okay, it is x. <clears throat> Uh, the function is fx is fx equals 3 half e power x minus 2. So it means it's going to be 3 half e okay, power f inverse minus 2 equals x. Okay, and after that, multiply, multiply 2 over 3, and it's going to be e power inverse of x function, of function x, equals 2 over 3 x, right? And then I would like to write thing like this, e power inverse times e power minus 2. Okay. After that, uh, give learn, learn e power inverse. times yeah times e power minus two learn okay 
to over 3x. <laughs> Yeah, I need more space. And it, it is <clears throat> learn and learn e power inverse plus because multiply being plus then e power minus two. Learn to x over three so it becomes uh inverse based on learn rule it is minus two learn e learn to x over three learn e equals one a learn e equals one. So if this one becomes f inverse uh, minus two, learn to x over three. Yeah. So it's going to be f inverse, inverse of fx is equals 2 plus learn 2x. So prove this. Okay. Next, what else? The graph of f and inverse, f inverse intersect at two points p and q as shown in the following diagram. Right. This and find PQ or find the distance PTQ to Q. Okay, we are going to find this. Okay, PQ. <laughs> In my calculator, Casio, Casio, uh, the Casio, uh, Casio. Graph seventy five. Uh, this coordinate point, okay, this coordinate point is two point five one seven nine nine, comma two point five one seven nine nine. So uh, on x-axis is this one, this number 2.51799 as well on y-axis. So about this, P as well, P, uh, the coordinate point is 0 0.26445. Comma zero point two six four four five six. Yeah. Now, uh, how to calculate a PQ, uh, P to Q? Uh, we calculate like this PQ equals. The root, okay, the formula to calculate the distance between two coordinate points, okay, 2.51799 minus 0 0.26445, squared, plus uh, 2.51799 minus 0 0.264, 264456 squared. 
Okay, so if you look this graph, okay, like uh, this number minus this number, okay, and this number minus this number square. Right, so if you calculate this, the result, uh, the result will be 3.18689 and approximately becomes 3.19 this. Part C. The graph of F is reflected, so reflected in the x-axis and then translated, so reflecting and translating parallel or translating parallel to the y-axis by five units in the positive direction to give the graph of a function G, right? The question, write down an expression for GX, right? Part C, FX, FX equals three half E power X minus two. After that, uh, the, the, uh, the first step is reflected on the x-axis. Reflected on the x-axis. So this function will be minus 3 half e power x minus 2. So uh, reflected, it means this okay if this is fx uh, the reflection will be will be like this okay uh reflected on the x axis next and after reflected on the x axis it is translated it translated translated parallel to the y axis by Five units. Okay. okay. Right. So it's going to be GX after translate, after translating, it's going to be minus three half E X minus two uh, based on this information that. Uh, translated parallel to the y-axis by five units in the positive direction. So it means plus five. It's going to be, wait. Gx plus minus three half <clears throat> e power x minus two plus five. This is GX. And what else? An expression for GX already, the domain of G. Domain of G, yes, is uh, part two. It's part two. And the first one is part one of C. Based on it information that uh, 
spiritual. Yeah, this one. So this is the domain. X interval 0 to 4. Okay. So if 0 here, if 0 here and on X axis, 0 here and 4 here, this the area of domain. Yeah, area of domain. So domain, uh, domain x zero to four. How about range? Range, uh, range here. Okay, uh, the range uh, zero to unlimited to downward to y. Yeah. Zero minus one. Uh, no, we have to, from here. Okay, the intercept point between this graph and uh, and so on to uh, unlimited minus. Yeah, here. Okay, not including zero. Right. What else? Okay, solve the equations f x equals g x. Give your answer in the form x equals a plus ln b, where a and b element of a number, the rational number, right? So this part uh, with d or c, oh yeah, part d, okay? fx equals to 3 half e power x minus 2, while gx is minus 3 half e power x minus 2 plus 5. So if x equals gx, it means 3 half e power x minus 2 equals minus 3 half e power x minus 2 plus 5. All terms uh, multiply by 2 and it becomes 3 e power x minus 2 equals minus 3 e x minus 2 plus 10. This is 10. And after that, it becomes 3 e x minus 2 and this term minus move to uh to left side is gonna be plus 3 e x minus 2 equals 10 and becomes 6 e power x minus 2 equals 10 wait I need more space okay so it's going to be e power x minus 2 equals 10 over 6. Or simplify becomes e power x e power minus 2, 5 over 3. And then what about here? Okay. Uh, becomes ln using ln ln e power x e power minus two ln five over three so after that it becomes ln e power x plus ln e power minus two ln five over three so based on ln rules it becomes X ln E minus 2 ln E ln 5 over 3. Ln E equals 1. Okay. Ln E equals 1. So it becomes X minus 2 equals ln 5 over 3. So X equals 
2 plus ln 5 over 3. So, A equals 2 and B equals 5 over 3. Tunskeri and Roca are small islands in the Atlantic Ocean in the same time zone. On a given day, the high of water in meters at Tunskeri is modeled by the function like this, AHT. This is the function, where T is the number of hours after midnight. The following graph shows the height of the water for 15 hours, starting at midnight. At low tide, the height of the water is 0 0.5 meters. At high tide, the height of water is 3.76 meters. All heights are given correct to two decimal places. Right. This is the graph. Question. The length of time between the first low tide and the first high tide is 6 hours and m minutes. Find the value of m to the nearest integer. Right. So this point is at the first low, uh, the first low tide, and this point is the first high tide. According to my calculator, KCO, uh, KCO graph 75. This coordinate point is 5.138,05,0.5. While this coordinate point is 11.2. Comma, three point seven six, and it's supposed to be this this graph like this, okay? And I have checked this this coordinate point also, but especially for this point is zero comma three point five five. Six, but we are going to focus on this point, uh, the the first low tide and the first high tide. The length of time between the first low tide and the first high tide is six hours. Okay, and we are going to find M. All right. So A, <clears throat> but A is the length of time. It is. 11.262 minus 5.138 and it is I need more space it is 6 hour uh, yeah 6.124 hours so 6 hours plus 1 uh, 0 0.124 hours. Six hours. I'm going to convert this part into minutes. 0 0.124 times 60. Okay, so it becomes six hours plus uh, 7.44 minutes. Okay. So M equals 7.44 minutes or approximately become seven minutes. Okay, next part B. Between two consecutive high tides, determine the length of time in hours for which the height of the water is less than one meter less than one meter uh it means like this <clears throat> i have sketch on my calculator and the coordinate point 
and the corner point we can determine we can determine with right uh the this is one a strike line okay so this coordinate point the first coordinate point is 15 point zero one seven uh, sorry fifteen uh point eight eight one seven comma one and this coordinate point is eighteen point nine five five comma one right so it means the length of time length of time the length of time it should be eighteen point nine five five minus fifteen point eight one seven equals three point one three eight hours or approximately becomes three point one four hours. <clears throat> Next part C, find the rate of change of the height of the water when T equals 13, giving your answer in meters per hour. Right, wait. Okay, so part C. Uh, the function is a 1.63 sine. 0 0.513 times t minus 8.2 plus 2.13 and the derivative of this function is a 0 0.513 times 1.63 cosine 0 0.513 T minus 8.2 plus 0. And if T equals uh, 13, so according to this information that T equals T equals 13. Right. If T equals 13, it will be our weight. We have to calculate it first, so it's going to be 0 0.83619 cosine 0 0.513 t minus 8.2. Okay, if t equals 13, if you substitute 13 into this. Uh, expression, uh, you can get the result minus 0 0.65062281476 and approximate being 0 0.651 meter per hour. Right. Next, <clears throat> on the same day, the height of the water at the second island, Roca, is modeled by the function this, A, B, C, D, where T is the number of hours after midnight and A, B, C, D greater than zero. The first low tide occurs at 2.41 when the height of the water is zero. In four meters. The first high tide occurs at 9 2 when the height of the water is 2.74 meters. Fine. Failures A, B, C, D. Okay. Fine. Eight. Uh, this part D. So uh, the function is it's T equals A sine. B times T minus C 
plus D, right? And and uh, times the time occurs are two forty one and nine two two forty one. Uh, are you convert to decimal it becomes two point six eight hours, and it is nine point zero three hours. <clears throat> I have uh, also I will create based on the previous function that. That at the graph, wait, graph like this. Okay, so the low tide happening, the low tide occurs uh, to a two uh, two point six eight. Okay, and zero point four, the height of uh, this tide, and the high tide occurs on 9.03 and the high tide is 2.74 okay now uh for a i mean a we are going to determine a a is amplitude amplitude is half of uh, the difference between high tide and uh, low tide okay so it means how to calculate this half uh, times high tide minus low tide and it is half uh, times 2.74 minus 0 0.4 and if you calculate uh, the result is 1.17 and the next is D, I would like to find D first. After that, uh, find period and B and C. Next, D is the vertical shift. Okay, uh, what is that? The vertical shift is the average of high tide and low tide average. It means half times high tide plus low tide. So half times 2.74 plus 0. 4 and it is the result is 1.57 i have explained this and uh in my classroom right and next period i would like to uh, find period of this graph period, the period is uh the time between two consecutive high time okay so it means uh, how to find period uh, through this time to consecutive uh, time with a uh, problem with okay the period is uh, yeah, nine sorry Nine zero two uh, minus two forty one. Okay, so it, it becomes eight, and this is sixty two. Becomes one, two is is six. Okay, six hours twenty one minutes. So it means the periods will be the periods will be. Two times six twenty one, okay, or two times six thirty five. If twenty one convert into decimal, becomes thirty five, and the result is twelve point seven hours. This is the period, okay. Right. Now we're going to determine B. B is 2 pi over 
uh, over period. Okay. Because one period is two pi. Uh, one period, according to our calculation, our previous calculations is two point, uh, sorry, 12.7. And if you calculate it two times 3.14 over 12.7, uh, point seven, it's gonna be zero point four nine four seven three nine, and you can approximate become zero point four nine five. This one. Now C. C is mean. Mean of uh, mean of time between low tide and high tide. It means half of uh, low tide time and high tide times. If you look this time is this graph. The time is uh this one. Okay, two uh two points uh six eggs. Okay, or two point uh, or two forty one, and this one nine zero two. Okay, this already convert. But for calculate this, I will using the time, the original time before conversion, and that two forty one plus nine zero two. Okay, nine two, and it becomes. Half, uh, two plus nine, 11, 41 plus two, 43. So it's gonna be half, 11, 43 over 60. We are con convert. And then it becomes, uh, convert to decimal 11.7166667. Okay, not so on, okay. And if you calculate, if you calculate half times this, 11.7161667, the result is 5.858333, so on. And you can approximate becomes 5.86. So this is C. When t equals t, the height of the water at Sul's carry is the same as the height as the height of the water at <clears throat> Rokal. Yeah, Sul's carry island and Rokal island for the first time. Find the value of t. Right. So. Do I change the color? Part E, uh, the function, uh, sur scary function is 1.63 sine 0 0.513 t minus 8.2 plus 2.13 while Rokal function is 1.17 sine 0 0.495 t minus 5.86 plus 1.57. Yeah. Okay. Recently, we calculate that, and I have cal. Uh, sorry, I have created the graph. Mm. This function, uh, the first function and the the first function and the second function, like this. 
it's important for us to determine T. Yeah. The two square graph like this. Okay, while the Roca graph like this. The Roca graph like this. Okay, and this point, wait. This point is this coordinate point. This graph point is four point one six two nine two comma zero point seven two five. So T is here, the same are the same height. So T is equals 4.16292. And you can approximate becomes 4.16. Okay. Three significant figures. A farmer owns land which lies between a wall and a hedge. The wall has a length of 50 meters and lies between points O and A. The hedge meets the wall at O and the angle between the wall and the hedge is 28 degrees. The farmer plans to form a triangular field for her price winning goods by placing a fence with a fixed length of 25 meters from point A to the heads. The fence meets the heads at point at a point B. The information is shown on the following diagram. This is the diagram. Question. Find two possible sizes of angle OAB, giving your answers in degrees. Hence, find the two possible areas of the triangular field. Right. Uh, for part A, uh, for part one, okay. Uh, we are going to using sign rule like this at a o over sign angle a b o is equals a b over sign angle a o b. AO is 50 according to the diagram over sign angle ABO. AB is 25 over sign 28. And it is sign the next sign. Angle ABO, it equals the yeah, sine 28 over 25 times 50. Sine angle ABO is, if you multiply this, uh, calculate it becomes 0. Point Nine three eight nine four three one two five six. This is number on my calculator, and then sine angle ABO, and it is sine of sixty nine point eight. Seven four eight one eight nine four. Yeah, 
Okay, so it means angle ABO is 69.8748 or 69.87. Uh, this is on the first quadrant. Okay, and at the second quadrant, because at quadrant, <clears throat> sign positive on the first and the second quadrant. So this is sign positive and sign positive at the first and the second quadrant. So at second quadrant, A second quadrant, uh, angle ABO is 180 minus 69.8748 and it is 110.125. One eight one one, so approximate becomes one hundred ten point one two five. This is at the second quadrant, and after that, the next step we're going to determine uh, angle A O. Uh, sorry, angle OAB. I mean AOB. Uh, OAB. I mean. Okay, OAB. This is ABO. So ABO has two angles: a first quadrant and the second quadrant. It means angle OAB. AOB it equals 180 minus angle OAB minus angle ABO. Okay. Right. 180 minus angle AOB minus angle ABO. Okay, 180 minus 28 and minus 90, uh, 69.87, a first quadrant. And the result is. The result is 82.1251. Approximate becomes 82.1. Okay. If uh, the angle is 110.125, so A, angle A, OAB is 180. Minus, uh, yeah, A O B minus A B O two hundred eighty minus uh, twenty eight minus one hundred ten point one two five, and the result is forty one point. Eight seven four eight approximate becomes forty one point nine. All right, and part two, part two. Oh, let's check the question. 
find the two possible areas of the triangular field. Two possible areas, okay. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to using cosine rule for the area is uh, based on cosine rules. Uh, the formula is area equals half a b sine c. Okay, this formula. So it means area, this area is, okay, half multiply OA times OB sine, this one, AOB sine 28. Okay, so area equals half times OA, OB sine angle AOB. Yeah. It equals half times 50 times 52.74. Nine two sine twenty eight, and if you calculate the result, will be nine hundred uh, six hundred nineteen point one zero six two three four. And you can approximate, approximate becomes 619.106 meter squared. Okay. That is uh, if sine uh, 28. OB is Oh yeah, I forgot to show OB. I have calculated OB. Okay, on this this area, I will explain how I uh, uh I have find OB according to sine rule. It was twenty five over sine 28. So OB, OB equals 25 over sine 28 times sine. Uh, angle OAB is 82.1251. And the result is 52.7492. So, uh, therefore, OB equals this number. And as well, if, uh, if we, if we using the second, uh, the second result of angle OAB, this one, uh, if sine 82.1251, now I'm going to using this angle, 41.8, uh, 41.8748. So, OB, uh, this is the first condition, and the second condition is OB 25 over sine 
28 times sine, this one is number, 41.8784. And the result is 55.54555. So later I will show you if this if this angle if this OB is this one, okay. So there are two OB. This one and this one. Okay. And the next area uh, is half multiply OA multiply A B. If the angle is O A B. Okay. So it becomes O A is 50 while o, while A B is 25. Sign angle O A B is 82.1251. Okay. If the angle is uh, 82.1251 and the result is 619.1059. So approximate becomes a nine, sorry, 6, uh, 619.106 meter square. Okay. You have same result. Now, uh, I'm going to find the area based on this formula, but if OB equals 35.5455, it becomes, <clears throat> okay, area equals half uh, times O A times O B sine angle A O B and it becomes half times fifty O B this one thirty five point five four five 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 and sine angle uh, angle A O B uh, is sine 28, same as what? And the result is, if you calculate, the result will be uh, 417.1190. Okay. That's work. Okay. And next, if we calculate this, if this one, OAB sign, uh, if we if we using the different angle, uh, the angle is 40, 41, if the angle is this one, 41.8748. Mm -hmm. If area equals half O A A B sine angle O A B. So it becomes half times fifty twenty five sine forty one point eight seven four eight and the result is Four hundred seventeen point one nine zero. It looks good. Okay. Next. One of the goats Brenda fights with the other goats. The farmer plans to to place a second fence with a fixed length of 
10 meters between the wall and the heads of the heads to form a small triangular field inside OAB for Brenda. The information is shown on the following diagram. So this is uh, the fence CD uh, 10 meters. The small triangular field OCD has an area 60. So this area is 60 meters squared. Let X be the distance OC. So this is X. And let Y be the distance of OD. This is Y. So that this expression X, this equation X squared plus Y squared equals 100 plus 240 over tangent 28. Okay. So according to cosine rule, according to cosine rule that x squared plus y squared uh, minus 2xy cosine 28 is equals 10 squared. And then this is according to cosine rule. And we be according to a uh, sine rule for area, area for sine rule. I'm gonna write in here. Area of OCD. Okay. Let me show you area of OCD this area with angle 28. Area of OCD is half, the formula half x, y, uh, sine 28 equals 60 according to the information that area is 60. So, uh, x, y, sine 28 is 120. And x, y equals 120 over sine 28. Now substitute uh, oh, y equals, wait, I'm going to write in y or letter. We have to. I'll continue with this equation first. So it is great. x squared plus y squared 100 minus 2xy cosine 28. Okay. And then this xy, uh, substitute this xy into here. It's going to be x squared plus y squared. 100 minus 2 times 120 over sine 28. Cosine 28 becomes x squared plus y squared. It becomes all oh, this plus because minus becomes plus. So plus 240 because 2 times 120. And it is cosine 28, sine 28. All right. And next becomes x squared plus y squared equals 100 uh, plus 240 <coughs> cotangent. Cotangent 28. Uh, based on the trigonometric rule that cotangent 28 is 1 over Tangent 28. So we can write in 
uh, x squared plus y squared is 100 plus 240 times 1 over tangent 28. So x squared, the conclusion is 100 plus 240 over tangent 28. Or proof. <clears throat> Next. Hence, determine the two possible lengths of OC. Okay. Oh, which one OC? OC. Oh, this one X. We are going to find X. Okay. All right. And I would, uh, I would, uh, I would start with the part C. <clears throat> this formula x, this equation x y equals one hundred twenty over sine twenty eight, and I will arrange this equation becomes y equals 120 over x sine 28, okay? And substitute y equals 120 over x sine 28, substitute, substitute to x squared plus y squared, 100 plus 240 over tangent, 28, okay, and it becomes, y is this one, it becomes x squared plus 120 over x sine 28 squared equals 100, 240 over tangent 28. And it's going to be x squared. Uh, 120 squared is 14,400 over x squared. Sine squared 28 is 100 plus 240 over <clears throat> tangent 28. So it becomes x squared uh, a 14,400 over sine squared 28 uh, becomes, wait on my calculator, this 65,334.70134 x power minus 2. It becomes 100 plus uh, 240 over tangent 28 is 451.3744. Next becomes 65, 334.70134. <clears throat> x squared, x minus, uh, x power minus 2, uh, 551, 3744. And after that, multiply by x squared. It's going to be x power 4. Uh, I would like to to move this number. Okay, becomes minus minus five hundred fifty one point three seven four four. 
x sorry x squared plus sixty five thousand three hundred thirty four seven zero one three four equals zero and if Uh, I'm going to using substitution, substitution. T equals X squared. If T equals X squared, uh, it becomes, the equation becomes, this equation becomes T squared minus uh, 1.3744 T plus 65,334.70134 plus zero. And through quadratic equation formula, T1 and T2 minus B plus minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2A. So A equals one, B equals equals uh, 551.3744 and C equals 65,334.70134. Uh, such as into this formula and you can find I have calculated it uh, through my calculation on my uh, my calculator I got this result that T1 is 378, 3.9767427. And X1, okay. so X1 and X2, A square root of T1, and the result is wait, X1. X1 is positive 19, 4, 6, 7, 3, 2, 5, or approximately becomes 19.4, uh, 4, 7. Okay. While x2 is minus 19.467325. Okay. And sorry, t2, sorry, t2, t2 is from this formula, t2 is 172.3972. This number on my calculator. So it means x3 and 4 is square root of t2. And the result is x4, x3, I mean, sorry, x3. x3 is 13.130029. This on my calculator. So maybe on your calculator, you will, uh, you're going to have uh, the different decimal places. So it becomes 13.13, approximate. The x4 is uh, minus 13.130029, but receive only the positive, the positive result. So it means the conclusion OC, so OC equals 13.13 meters, so one, okay, meters, or uh, this one, 19.47 uh, meters.